नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओम पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वासंदी भगवदगीते भगवेषिणी ओ भगवदगीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एन लाइटनमेंट टू पार्थ द एंशंट सेज व्यास इन्क्लूडेड इट इन द महाभारत ओ गॉडेस shower of the nectar like knowledge of non dualism contained in your 18 chapters o oh my affectionate mother the destroyer of rebirth i meditate upon thee krishna vandana vasudeva sutam devam kansa chanura mardanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat guru son of vasudeva the slayer of kansa and chanur extreme delight for mother devaki o oh lord krishna the supreme teacher of the universe my salutations to you shrimad bhagavad gita the 10th adhyay of uh, vibhuti yoga and uh, with great compassion uh, with, with that uh, you know a typical mercy that a great teacher showers on his disciple shri krishna has started addressing arjuna's request Arjuna's pleadings that please reveal to me your true nature without leaving anything hidden. Hmm? O Sheshena, and Vistarena. In great details, you let me know. Now, Sri Krishna doesn't want to give any false promise to Krishna, Arjuna. So, Sri Krishna very clearly says, "I will tell you in details, no doubt, but." It is impossible even for me to explain my in. Dire divine manifestations. They are innumerable. Hmm? All my divine manifestations are ananta. They they cannot be counted. So if you want me to tell you a sheshina without keeping anything in reserve, that is not possible. So what I will do is, I will tell you about the prominent ones, hmm? the pradhanya ta. most prominent most important manifestations of mine i will declare them to you i will disclose them to you and based on that which i am going to tell you then you can infer the greatness of the great lord then you can infer then you can have some kind of an idea of the vast greatness of the eternal lord what i am going to tell you is certainly and i i'm going to tell you in details i am not going to uh, cut short on that i am not going to take shortcuts on that hmm? i am going to tell you very much in details hmm? but vistarasya me i will tell you in details in vistar but i will tell you the prominent ones and how shri krishna started with that 20th shlok shri krishna started telling about uh, Uh, the the divine manifestation of the great lord how we can perceive the presence or the lord pervading in this creation how we can perceive it how we can realize it how we can meditate upon it and to start with sri krishna gave that simple answer with great profound truth sri krishna said in the 28th shlok that we read aham atma guda kesha सर्वभूताशयस्थित ओ गुड़ाकेश ओ कॉन्कर ऑफ स्लीप ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ स्लीप हू हैज कॉन्क्यूड द सेंसेस लिसन फ्रॉम मी नाउ आई एम दैट सोल ड्वेलिंग इन ऑल द बींग्स द मोमेंट यू सी अ बींग नियर यू द मोमेंट यू परसीव ऑफ एनी बींग एनी वेयर इन एनी टाइम फ्रेम नो फॉर श्योर दैट the atman in that being is nothing but me i am that atman i am that soul of all the beings that is the first thing shri krishna said that we can meditate upon 
and once we do it i mean the 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 understanding of the lord is so simple for us that whichever being we see whether it is a human being or an animal kingdom or being from animal kingdom or uh, any any being from the plant kingdom whichever being with soul in it shri krishna says aham atma i am that soul dwelling in all the living beings and then aham adischa madhyam cha bhutanam anta eva cha bhutanam anta eva cha i am the adi i am the birth of all these beings i am in the sustenance of all these beings madhyam cha i am in the birth and i am in the sustenance and also bhutanam anta eva cha and also in their death i am prevailing i am filled in their beginning their living and their death i am there everywhere as far as the living beings are concerned so that is the first answer shri krishna has given to arjuna as to where can we think about the lord in this creation where we can uh, uh, put our thoughts as to how to perceive the lord in things surrounding us hmm keshu keshu sha bhaveshu chintyosi bhagavan maya tell me in which all forms of these creation should i be thinking that you are pervading you are you have which of these forms of this vast creation this creation is with so many complexity so many complex and diverse forms it is not just one human being or one person who is you know uh, existing in this uh, creation there are millions and billions and billions of uh, uh, different types of characters different type of organisms different types of materials and different types of beings all put together now if i have to find you in any of them how do i think about it hmm? that what that's what the ashuna had asked him that keshu keshu shubhaveshu chintyosi bhagavan maya tell me how should i think to understand your dwelling in this creation in all these diverse forms and krishna has beautifully answered that first of all arjuna first of all know for sure that whichever is the living being know for sure that the soul dwelling in that being i am that soul and then lord doesn't stop only there it is not just that soul but it is this entire process of creation it is entire cycle of this creation that beginning middle and end it not it is not only with all the living beings as such this entire creation is undergoing that cycle the worlds they come into existence they take birth the universes all these solar systems and the galaxies milky ways they all take birth they are they remain for some time that is the middle portion on the time scale and finally they all go back to that sachidananda brahman from where the prakriti has projected all these things so that birth sustenance and the destruction this cycle is for everything in this creation and lord says in that cycle wherever you see birth i am there where you wherever you see the life force is being nourished is being sustained i am there and whenever you see wherever you see that the life has the, the life force has departed from the bodies from the beings in that process of death also i am there i am controlling all these three as far as this creation is concerned what more you want to meditate upon so meditate upon me in all the beings meditate upon me in the entire cycle of the beings not only beings even the creation so that was 
28th sloka the teaching given by shri krishna to arjuna and also to us now after that uh, uh, shri krishna is going to tell about some now now he said i'll tell you the prominent features of my manifestation i am there everywhere no doubt about it now among the various things in this creation because shri krishna has told that pradhanyatah nas nastyanto vistarasyame i will tell you in details about these prominent aspects of atma vibhutaya divya atma vibhutaya hantate kathayishyami divya atma vibhutaya pradhanyatah kuru shrestha nastyanto vistarasyame in details i will tell you the prominent ones now in the first shloka itself shri krishna has addressed so to say everything covering in this creation now he is highlighting the prominent examples now he is actually giving the examples that you think of this you think of me you know this think of me now he is giving that long list which are represented by this great lord so this list now shri krishna is sharing with arjuna आदिनाम विष्णु ज्योतिषाशुमा मरीचिमस्मी नक्षत्राणाम शशि वेन वी लुक अराउंड अवर वर्ल्ड एज सच वेन वी लुक अराउंड अवर सराउंडिंग्स वॉट वी सी वी सो मेनी थिंग्स वी सी सो मेनी थिंग्स वी वी हियर ऑफ सो मेनी थिंग्स वी सी द सन वी सी द मून वी नीड टू सी द स्टार्स एंड प्लैनेट्स वी सी द Uh, all, all this uh, various kinds of things in this creation hmm? now from between these various things and phases of the creation shri krishna is telling arjuna the prominent ones which are to be considered one with the lord okay so shri krishna says adityanam aham vishnu aditya Aditya is sons of Aditi. Now, this uh, typical uh, concept, sons of Aditi, uh, is uh, Aditi and uh, uh, her husband, Sage Kashyapa. Hmm. They are twelve sons. Now, Kashyapa, Sage Kashyapa had two wives, Aditi and Diti. Among them, from uh, uh, Aditi, they had twelve sons. Uh, between uh, kashyapa and aditi now these 12 sons they are called as adityas and what is the significance of these adityas these aditya the each son is representing one solar month one one month in our indian calendar so starting from april that is where from the actually the uh, indian uh, uh, way of uh, the, the the calendar starts the almanac it starts from the month of april now there are 12 sons of aditi hmm, which are given uh, whose names are attached with every month so the 12 sons uh, le, 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 let me read out from this commentary ah uh, the 12 sons of aditi are anshu dhata indra aryama vivaswa bhaga पर्जन्य द्वष्ट मित्र विष्णु वर्ण एंड पूष नाउ दीज आर फ्रॉम अप्रैल टू मार्च लाइक अवर फाइनेंशियल ईयर स्टार्ट फ्रॉम अप्रैल टू मार्च नाउ द विष्णु सो टू से टेंथ सन ऑफ अदिति एंड कश्यप kashyapa or kashyap uh, 10th son of kashyapa and aditi yeah uh, vishnu he uh, the, the the month of january coincides with his name that is where that uh, uh, you know the the solar uh, solstice from uh, that that uh, our 14th january makar sankranti festival hmm? so that that particular time frame is uh, uh, connoted as the 12th son of vishnu 
that is where the Brahma's day begins kind of. And Sri Krishna says, I am Vishnu among the sons of Adityas. That is the phase where the gods, they wake up from their sleep in the month of January. So, the first thing Sri Krishna says, among the twelve sons of Aditi, I am Vishnu. I am Vishnu which is represented by the month of January. So that is, uh, now how, how this particular thing uh, comes up giving uh, examples that, uh, uh, so, so supposing uh, we, they, there is an exhibition. There is an exhibition of say uh, fruits or flower exhibitions uh, we, we all, I mean we are familiar with, right? Now what happens in the flower exhibition? People who cultivate the flowers, they pick up the best among their flower gardens and represent them in the exhibition. The beautiful roses, the best among their rose gardens, they will pluck and exhibit in that exhibition as the best rose. Now Shri Krishna is, in the same principle Shri Krishna is applying here, in identifying the best things in this creation, being one with the Lord. So therefore Shri Krishna says here, Adityanam aham Vishnu. Among the twelve sons of Aditi, I am the Vishnu, which coincides with the solar solstice, which is very much liked by people for commencing the course of the uh, divine path hmm? towards the solar, so, summer solstice, progressively dispelling the pinching cold of winter. And that is where the Uttarayan starts. That is when we start celebrating the Makara Sankranti. So that Vishnu, the tenth son of uh, uh, Aditi, is me. Now this Vishnu, it, which is uh, which Sri Krishna is mentioning, is uh, ex no, not exactly the from the holy trinity of uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara. This wish, that Vishnu is ultimate Lord, of course. That Vishnu is the ultimate Lord. Krishna is the incarnation of that Vishnu. Now this Vishnu Krishna is referring to is the twelfth son of Aditi, which coincides with the month of January, and from where actually all this the, the auspicious uh, uh, days in the yearly calendar they start with the Makar Sankranti. So Sri Krishna says of the Adityas I am Vishnu. Then Jyotisham Raviran Shumar among the Jyotis, among the luminary objects, among the objects which are providing enlightenment which are giving away all the light among such objects among such radiant uh, luminaries I am the radiant sun they, they, to us sun is the only luminary uh, thing in this creation during daytime that is the only source of light for us but in this entire vast creation, that is not the only sun. There are millions of other suns like that. Maybe some more powerful, more bright, more luminary than this sun of ours. But for us, this sun is the ultimate source of light, isn't it? During the daytime, of course. Now, Sri Krishna says, among all the luminary objects, I am this radiant sun that you see. Now Sri Krishna has started giving examples. He says among the months, among the twelve sons of Adityas, I am Vishnu. Second example he is giving, if you look around all the uh, objects of illumination, I am the sun. The, that is ultimate object of illumination for us who are living on this earth. There might be others also. Even in our solar system, Apart from sun, there is no other object which is actually giving that kind of illumination. Rest all others, they are throwing the borrowed lights of sun. But the sun is the ultimate and therefore Sri Krishna says, among the illuminary objects, I am the sun. I am the radiant sun. 
Then Sri Krishna says, Marichir Marutas Marichir Marutas Masmi among the Marichis. Now uh, uh, there are 49 Manus or wind gods. They are called as uh, Maruts. Maruts is basically wind. So among the 49 different types of wind gods, hmm, Marichir Marutam Asmi. Among the Maruts, among the wind gods, like we, 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 we get uh, so many different type of, uh, you know, the air currents, isn't it? Sometimes we have a forceful wind, sometimes we have a mild breeze, sometimes we have a very pleasant kind of, uh, you know, just, just, just a cool air, you know, that cool breeze cooling down our body. So there are different, even in, in the wind force in this creation, there are different types of winds and Sri Krishna says among those 49 different types of Maruts the wind gods I am the Marichi so the best of the wind gods is therefore identified as Ishvara as the great lord now Sri Krishna is identifying the best among all the things in this creation he has identified the best among the months. He has identified the best among the uh, light giving uh, sources and he has identified himself with the best wind god. What next? Sri Krishna says Nakshatranam Aham Shashi Among all those celestial stars, planets, objects around you hmm, I am the moon. Now look at this uh, cleverness of Sri Krishna of telling uh, that sun and moon are represented by me. These are the only two sources of light for us. Sun is the permanent source of light during daytime, no doubt about it. And during the night time, it is only the moon, which it might be a borrowed light, no doubt about it. But still, that cool moonlit uh, uh, light that we get, that moonlight that we get. It is so soothing to our body, especially on the full moon day. Why, 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 why we like the full moon day? When the moon is in all its wonderful glory, shining the path of all those who are stuck in the darkness. That is the only source of light then. So Sri Krishna says, among the nakshatras, among the stars and planets, among the asterisms, I am the moon. So that is Sri Krishna's teaching to us in this 21st shloka of highlighting the four best things among things surrounding us. Among the months, among the objects giving enlightenment, giving light for that matter. Then among the different types of wind gods, he says, I am the Marichi among the Maruts. And finally, the last portion of this 21st shloka, I am the moon of all these nakshatras. Moon is the only object in the during night which has the capacity, which has the capability of throwing light in darkness, of getting rid of that darkness of the night. Only moon can do it. No other things. Neither Saturn, nor Jupiter, nor Mars. I mean, they are of no consequence. They might be emitting light to some other thing at some other place. But for us, they are of no use. Hmm, the Mercury, the Venus, the Saturn, the Jupiter, all those things in our solar system, it is only the moon. So Krishna says, I am that moon. So these four things, four pradhanyataha, what he had indicated, Sri Krishna has started telling us that in this uh, 21st slok, these are the four prominent things you can co -re relate with me. I am there in these four things. So that was Sri Krishna's teaching to us in this 21st shloka of the Vibhuti Yoga, the 10th Adhyay of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Ma Jai Swamiji